It's the middle of November and here in Cambridge it's a lovely day outside and in our garden the autumn colours are just about at their peak which is more or less about right uh, for this time of the year. I always think the second week of November in Cambridge is when the leaves look their best outside. In our garden the uh, field maples are looking wonderful. They go lovely golden yellow for a couple of weeks um, at this time of the year. Indoors, the um, orchid that I really want to focus on this month is this um, Zygopetalum. It's a hybrid and I don't know the name because it didn't come with a name from the person who gave it to me, but the reason I chose it is that the scent is really delicious. It's a lovely, sweet, um, quite light scent, very much like hyacinth, so a really, really lovely um, smell altogether. As you can see, it's um, quite a big plant. This is growing in a um, sort of 10 inch um, pot uh, full of um, bark. Now, zygopetalins come from South America between sort of um, mid, around about sort of mid altitudes. And this is one of the few orchids that I have actually been lucky enough to see growing in the wild. Um, in 2013, I was lucky enough to join a really enjoyable um, trip to Brazil to visit uh, one of the last remaining remnants of the original Atlantic rainforest. And that's where the mountains quite near the east of Brazil, just above um, Rio de Janeiro, the warm, moist air from the Atlantic is pushed up by the mountains and all the moisture condenses. In the winter, um, it's fairly dry. There's not a lot of rainfall, but bear in mind that there's a lot of mist. They sort of roll in from the Atlantic, and by tea time, sometimes you can, you know, be, you're basically up in the clouds. Um, in the summer, it's warmer and a lot wetter. When we were there, it was October, which in South America is spring, the temperatures at night were down to about 10 degrees centigrade, so it was pretty chilly. But then in the day, the mornings were typically quite sunny and it got quite warm in the day. So in here, the intermediate conditions um, where it's at this time of the year, it's down to about 15 at night. And then I have a, an additional heater, which is on a timer, which just boosts the temperature up to about 20 during the day. They suit it quite well, and in the summer it doesn't get too warm, very rarely above 30 degrees centigrade. I keep them quite well watered in the uh, summer. They get um, dumped regularly once a week um, to thoroughly wet the compost and then let it drain. And then you're rewarded um, at this time of the year with these lovely, long-lasting, really beautiful uh, smelling flowers. They fill the air in the, in, in the greenhouse um, beautifully. I've actually got four different uh, zygopetalins. I've got this one, um, another hybrid, which is just over there that isn't in flower yet. Um, this is another hybrid, which I've had for um, nearly as long as this. But as you can see, it's nothing like as large. And in fact, I don't know really why, but I struggle to get this one to put on a lot of growth. This one is Zygopetalum Louisendorf crossed with Arthur L. Now all these hybrids are very complex hybrids. There are about 14 different species of Zygopetalums that have, might have been used in the ancestry. Um, and I don't know enough about them to explain in great detail. Um, this one you'll see is growing in a clear plastic pot in a black plastic pot. And I've recently taken to using this method of growing because it means that you can actually see what is happening with the roots. You can see how moist they are, whether they're drying out and whether they're making good growth or not. And then they're just kept in a black plastic pot. It stops uh, green algae growing all the way around the outside. When I was in Brazil, the zygopetalum that I saw growing in the wild um, was this one. 
zygopetal and crinitum. Now, you can see from this that I've had it for about one, two, three, four years, and I'm struggling um, to get this up to flowering size, unfortunately, so I've still got um, to look forward to it flowering for me for the first time. I don't know why it's not doing um, so well. Um, I've tried different things, but um, anyway, hopefully next year or the year after, I might get some flowers on it. Now, when we saw that growing in Brazil, it was actually growing not in really jungly dark forest, as you might imagine, but in much lighter woodland. This was an area of old forest that had actually been felled and burnt over uh, about 30 or 40 years ago and has now regrown and is now moving back towards the original, much more diverse um, forest that it should be. And the zygopetal and crinitums that we saw were growing just down at the base of some of the now um, older trees, not in the soil, but basically amongst lots of light leaf litter. And they would be relatively dry in the winter, but with lots of mists and cool dewy nights. And then in the summer, masses of rain and a lot more warmth. So that is really why um, in here, in these intermediate, relatively cool conditions, I find that zygopetalins both do well and in most cases flower for me very well. Now I'll just make a bit of room because there are one or two other really um, delicious smelling orchids uh, that I wanted to show you. Now, about a month ago, I introduced um, this orchid, which is um, Prostechia garciana, also goes by two other names. And it had just um, started to open its first flower a month or so ago. Now you can see, I can't remember which was the original flower, but that's still open. It's now got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 14 flowers open. And the smell is wonderful because um, having so many flowers out all at once and quite long lasting, it really does make a fantastic show. Um, this leaf's looking a bit messy, but generally speaking, all the foliage looks lovely. And in fact, it's got another flower spike coming here and one more there. So a combination of these long lasting flowers from the first flush and then being followed up by a few more on the slightly later maturing growth means that that is going to be, as I said, um, when I looked, filmed it the other time, really one of my star performers. A new orchid that's out um, this month that I've grown for many years um, and I picked it particularly for its scent is this. Um, this is um, Area Coronaria and this has a sort of, I can't really put my finger on it, it has a, all I can say is it smells a bit like the sort of perfume that some of the girls <laughs> used to wear when I was at school. I don't know which one it was, but um, it has a much more sort of a crisp sort of... Mm, I just can't really put my finger on it. Anyway, it's a very um, arresting scent altogether. And the, the flowers are quite beautiful, although they don't last more than about um, two weeks. And then finally, this month, and I'm hoping that um, somebody might be able to help me out with this one day, this um, beautiful orchid uh, was given to me a couple of years ago uh, by a friend. Um, also, <laughs> I don't know the name of it, it's quite clearly a... Um, Brasso-Lalio-Catlia hybrid. Um, 
a little bit sort of like the, I think there's one called King of Taiwan. I don't think it's that. Um, but this has a really wonderful um, and quite powerful perfume. And I would say perfume rather than scent. Really lovely. Um, I've got it growing in this um, shallow um, plastic tray, which seems to suit it very well. The um, person who gave it to me used to use these, and I thought that seems like a good idea, because the depth of the compost is quite shallow, and after it's been dunked um, once a week, it can drain and then dry out again very quickly, which is, of course, what you want. So this is... I know I'm mostly... Um, attracted to species or primary hybrids, in other words orchids that look more like their original counterparts. But I must say at this time of the year it's quite nice to have something that's quite so flamboyant. Anyway, so that's um, the scented orchids that I've got um, to show you this month. I can't emphasise enough really how enjoyable it is to have orchids that both look beautiful and smell uh, beautiful because as I said before this greenhouse is just off our kitchen so I can come in the mornings and actually appreciate the scent um, and that provides such a beautiful extra dimension to growing orchids I think and I shall continue gradually adding uh, here and there different orchids that I come across uh, that have a beautiful scent the one thing I would say before I go about the zygopetalans is they do vary quite a lot in how beautifully they are scented and how um, strongly they are scented. So I have tried to choose zygopetalans based on being able to smell them before I've bought them or been given them. And I would say that if scent is the main feature that you're after, um, smelling before you actually start growing is uh, a very good idea, if it's possible. But of course it isn't, because you, if you're ordering plants on the internet or by mail order or when they're not in flower, you can't do that and you have to take some risks. And I've taken quite a few risks and some, I've, um, some have turned out very well, some not so well. Um, but anyway, that's all part of the fun of growing. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I um, hope you've enjoyed it and see you in the next one.